So thank you to everyone who has logged in for this webinar uh, titled Navigating the Future of South Yemen. I'm Ryan Morrow. I'm a fellow with the Arabian Institute and an adjunct professor at Regent and Liberty Universities where I teach courses on counterterrorism and US foreign policy in the Middle East. So today we're gonna to be talking about the future of South Yemen due to the overthrow of the Yemeni government and the subsequent civil war, the Southern transitional government that seeks independence for South Yemen has risen up. The truce in Yemen has held in place over eight months since it expired. And while that's progress, it is not a permanent settlement of the conflict. As a result, there are calls in some quarters for a peace agreement where Yemen would go back to being partitioned into North and South Yemen, leaving the Houthis in control of the North and the Southern transitional government in control of the South. So what is the future of South Yemen and how does it impact the world? That's the most important question. Let's introduce uh, our two guests that we have right now and I'll introduce the third uh, if he logs on. But first we have David B. Ottaway who received a bachelor's from Harvard in 1962 and a PhD from Columbia University in 1972. He worked for 35 years for the Washington Post as a foreign correspondent in the Middle East, Africa, and Southern Europe, and later as a national security and investigative reporter in Washington before retiring in 2006. He has won numerous awards for his reporting at home and abroad and was twice a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. Onaway is a fellow, was a fellow at the Woodrow Wilson Center in 1979 to 1980, and again in 2005 to 2006, and is currently a Middle East fellow. And Dr. Anthony Cimente uh, earned a PhD from Durham University in Middle East politics with a focus on civil military relations in fragmented states. His main interests include military, security, and international affairs in the GCC region and Yemen. Anthony Cimente spent five months as a visiting associate lecturer in comparative politics at Northumbria University. He is currently an independent researcher and advisor with Gulf State Analytics, a geopolitical consultancy, sorry about that, geopolitical consultancy based in Washington, DC. So let's go to the first question, which is for Anthony. The U.S. wants to de-escalate in Yemen, but also has its own fears of groups like Al-Qaeda. Should the U.S. consider building direct partnerships with local groups in the South and in order to fight the extremist groups? Yes, I think that the United States should recognize Southern independence. And I think that more importantly, it should continue the efforts that it's currently undertaking to combat uh, Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. There's a special operations task force, uh, part of the Arabian Peninsula that, uh, that in involves members of Joint Special Operations Command, um, the Navy SEALs and other intelligence capacities that are used to fight AQAP. And I think that um, when we look at the situation in Yemen, that there is a desire in the Biden administration to establish a lasting peace. But I think that the fight against AQAP um, is, impor is important to, to the United States and it will continue to, to be a, <clears throat> it will continue to be of importance. We also see um, there's one or two Emirati battalions uh, that are based in Abiyan and Mukala, and they also involve intelligence cells, and those help coordinate uh, counterterrorism efforts amongst the Southern military forces against the AQAP threat. Great. Uh, so let's go over to David then. David, although the U.S. is insisting on its desire to see de-escalation in Yemen, we don't really see a big focus on the significant issues related to the South, even though the Southern issue could itself trigger an escalation. So David, why is that? And what should the US approach to South Yemen be? Well, uh, first of all, um, <laughs> the United States under pressure from Congress has been uh, disengaging for, from Yemen for a number of years now. Right. And of course, um, what's happening in Ukraine has totally turned their attention that way. 
and uh, to how to deal with Russia. And that's a, really become an all-consuming issue for this administration. So Yemen, uh, um, has, I guess you could say, has been a, gone, gone to the back burner. Yep. <laughs> and, um, and um, you know, the more you get to know about Yemen and all the factions and all the feuding and uh, its recent history, um, I think it's probably a good thing the United States is putting it at the back burner and um, leaving it up to the regional regional states, including Saudi Arabia, UAE, um, Iran, to figure out uh, a solution. Okay. Anthony, uh, feel free to answer that as well, but uh, I have an additional question for you. Do you think the Houthis would even agree to a new partition? Would a declaration of independence by South Yemen lead to more fighting over the establishment of that new state's borders? This is a, this is a complicated question. Um, the, there's, been, there's been reports from Arab news outlets stating that the UN Special Envoy to Yemen has developed a, a new peace map, a, a new roadmap to essentially establish peace. And the Yemeni um, diplomatic source that was cited said that they were gonna have direct negotiations between the Houthis and the SDC in the hopes of establishing a de facto state in, in, Yemen, in South Yemen. Um, now, what, what would become complicated is the Houthis, the Houthis have expanded their tactics, techniques, procedures in asymmetric warfare. They've learned, they've learned everything from Iran, Hezbollah and Qatab Hezbollah advisors. Any kind of sustained military action would require increase, further increase in Iranian support for the Houthis. The Houthis have a domestic uh, industrial defense capacity, but it relies heavily upon Iranian expertise, which is executed by the IRGC Quds Force, in addition to um, the technology. And, and so the STC desires a peaceful solution to the conflict in Yemen, but it's been made abundantly clear uh, from what transpired during the summit of the Southern um, Consultative Meetings, which took place in Aden from May 4th uh, to May 8th, that there's been a unification of the Southern, of the southern factions, the various al Harak movements, and they've built, they've, built a, they've built a political consensus. The STC now has military control. If you look at a war, a war taking place, and you have the Houthi involvements, it's very likely based on past Emirati actions and the support they provide the Southern Transitional Council and various military units um, that are that are now combined with the Southern Transitional Council based on the SNP. Um, that the Emiratis will provide military support and increase logistics and supply support. Um, we know based on, in 2019, they launched an airstrike against al Isla forces outside of Aden that were attacking, that were attacking um, the security belt forces. And so what we know is that the UAE, the UAE would likely provide um, that support. The STC, like I said, um, doesn't, they're not, they're not warmongers. They want a peaceful solution, but Southern aspirations for a peaceful state have been planted in, have been planted in, in the, since the 1990 unification and perhaps even before that. When you saw the unification occur, it was a subjugation and occupation of the North over the South. Over 200,000 Southerners were fired from both military and ministerial positions. Uh, land was occupied by the Northerners and, and, and that led to the Civil War in 1994. 
So I don't see a unified Yemen state manifesting. I don't think the STC is willing to negotiate with the Houthis based on their demands. One of their demands is that the Southern or that so there's the Houthi salaries are paid from resources by, from the South, um, primarily oil. And I, and, and, I, and I think that if the Houthis right now are launching intermittent attacks and the South is facing attacks, not only intermittently from the Houthis, but also from Al Isla, which um, is, and also from AQAP. And there's individuals from the SDC who I've spoken with who said that there is a fear that there will be an alliance between the Houthis, the Houthis and Al Isla, and possibly AQAP, to to once again subjugate the South um, over the north, the north over the South, and so that's what that's that's where the this situation is right now. It, it's it's no peace, no war. Um, but the problem is that the Houthis thrive in war, and the Houthis, and and the Houthis revolutionary and radical ideology is really what drives them. So it's difficult to say whether or not they would launch a a, a significant military attack, because it would take a lot. It would take a lot for them to regain the South um, militarily. Did that answer your question? Yes, yes, it did. Okay. Um, so I just wanna remind the audience that they can submit questions for us uh, to take. Um, but while we wait for those questions to come in, if any of them do, uh, David, uh, what are the risks for the US in supporting an independent South Yemen? You kind of alluded to it earlier, but let's go over that, um, those considerations for the US again. Well, I think it depends. Um... I think one of the mysteries here, it's not clear to me whether the Saudis uh, will accept again uh, uh, an independent South Yemen. In 1994, when there was an uprising after the unification of the North and the South in 1990 and 1994, Anthony referred to this, there was an uprising in the, in the South and the Saudis pressed the United States to recognize a new South Yemen. And <clears throat> the US said, no, we're, our policy is one Yemen, and they didn't go for it. I don't think the United States <clears throat> is interested in two Yemens, but I don't think they have the interest or the will or, uh, to uh, stop it. And if the Saudis do go along with it, um, which I think is possible because they did it before, um, then that would, we would go along with it. I don't think that's, that's not the official policy is one Yemen. Yeah. That's the one, that's the policy. But that's nice to say, but if you're going to deal with the facts on the ground, you're very likely going to have to deal with uh, two Yemens again. And I've been, I've been feeling this for a number of years. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't think the U.S. will will push for it or particularly welcome it, but I think they'll go along with it. The question is, will the Saudis? And I think that is becoming more and more complicated because the Saudis are not, have begun find, uh, standing up uh, tribal militias in the south yep. to fight the STC, the Southern Transitional Council, uh, particularly in the Hadramaut. Yeah. And the Saudis have always had kind of in the back of their mind, the idea of putting a pipeline directly south uh, from Saudi Arabia, or the, the Eastern oil fields, directly south across Hadramut to have an exit for their oil that did not have to go through the Persian Gulf and remain under the threat of, <clears throat> threat of the Iran. Iranian attacks. So they have a particular interest in the Hadramut. Um, the Saudis have pretty well given up the North. The question is, what are they gonna do in the South? <laughs> are they, 
Do they want to, you know, risk another civil war in the South? Um, or are they, are they going to try and push for some kind of, you know, negotiations among the various uh, Southern factions? Uh, and to me, it's not clear because they're also arming new militias in the, in the South. So that doesn't suggest that they're uh, getting ready for a peaceful resolution of the, of the struggle over the South. On the other hand, as I said, they have in the past, uh, in 1994, they accepted and welcomed and uh, the, the South Yemen becoming independent again. Anthony, did you have anything to add to that? No, I, I agree with everything that David said. I, I don't think that um, I don't think Yemen is a high priority for the United States. I think that it, that as David has stated in his previous comments, the Ukraine um, the United States is more preoccupied with the war in Ukraine, and right now they're they're also occupied with um, facilitating normalization between Saudi Arabia and Israel in addition to China when in, and and I and uh, when it comes to to Saudi Arabia I also agree with uh, with David uh, Mr. Ottaway uh, there's no there it, the, 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 the the Saudis are in a sort of rivalry with the Emiratis in the south um, there was a an article published by the Carnegie Endowment um, Foundation or Institute that, sp uh, that, that speaks about this in, in great detail, but there's, there's always going to be that rivalry between the Saudis and the Emiratis in the South. And whether or not the, the Saudis will support a Southern state or accept that is difficult to say. My uh, understanding based on conversations with multiple individuals from the Saudi side and the Yemen side. And what we know is that Mohammed bin Salman's primary focus is to stop the war in Yemen because he is focusing on domestic policies, primarily vision 2020, um, 2030, in addition to a new military restructuring program, he's also more focused on becoming the dominant leader in the Arab world. So I think that if the Saudis are able to, to get assurances that the Houthis will not attack their territorial sovereignty, then, then the Saudis might not have an issue with with us with the southern state in Yemen but again as David stated the the Saudis are are arming tribal militias that are that are directly against the STC so this comes down to the fact of, of state building and what we saw from the southern national pact that was signed um, that was signed in May is a consolidation of power um, within the STC and a unification of a political consensus and also of, mil of military forces. And so right now the main issue is in terms of state building, the STC is going to have to establish a monopoly of violence as Max Weber uh, would say. So that's that's where that that's where that's my opinion on the on the whole situation. Okay, great. And now we've got our third panelist uh, who has joined in, Amar Al Bid. Uh, he is a special representative of the President for Foreign Affairs at the Southern Transitional Council. Uh, welcome, Amar. Mm, thank you, um, and I apologize for my uh, my 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 late attendee attendance. <laughs> it's all right. So we've got. Uh, some questions from the audience, but first I want to <clears throat> ask you one of the questions that's been on my mind uh, as we've been discussing uh, South Yemen, mm. which is if there were to be an independent South Yemen again, would South mm. Yemen join the Abraham Accords and be at peace with Israel? Um, this is a, this is a 
uh, this is something that's related to the to the security of the region, and uh, whatever that will will help uh, the stability and security of the region for sure will will, will go in as 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 a southern state. That's a definitive. Mm -hmm. Is there any opinion or attitude towards the Abraham Accords coming from the Southern Transitional Council? Uh, there isn't any statement. Uh, the thing is that whatever our our principle and value values are are are, are straightforward. Uh, stability of the region is the most important thing. Whatever, if Abraham Accord, we think that it's it's good for the region, for stability of the region. Then definitely we are with it, hundred percent. Okay, so I'm going to go to a question from the audience, uh, and the first one is going to be, and, and I'll give each of you a chance to answer this. Uh, if the U.S. is not going to support South Yemen independence, what can, should, and will it do to provide support for local issues, autonomy, and defense from the Houthis? Um, I don't know who wants to take that first. Maybe, David, you'd like to? I would say in two words, not much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really don't think the, 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 the Biden administration is going to spend a lot of time and energy on Yemen. Um, the Congress didn't wanted them to disengage, and they fought to stay involved and help the Saudis, but they finally did disengage. And I don't think they're going to jump back into the Yemeni quagmire. Um, with any much of with much of a you know forceful or um, meaningful policy, they're just going to stay on the sideline. Yeah, Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, I totally agree with what um, David just stated. Um, we we know that Jake Sullivan, the national um, the national security advisor to President Biden spoke at the Washington Institute for Near East Politics, um, where he laid out the sort of the US, not necessarily the US national framework, but US policy towards the region and in general. And what the US is working towards is regional integration. And I don't think that that, that Yemen is, is something, as David said, they're focused on. Uh, they're focused on building a security capacity a regional security capacity within the Middle East that can enable them to gradually disengage militarily and shift um, assets towards the Indo-Pacific uh, region. So that so I so I don't like Mr. Attaway stated. Um, I don't believe that there's going to be any significant U.S. involvement in South Yemen. And Amar, is, are, is there anything that the STC is requesting from the United States that's not currently receiving? The, uh, to be honest, uh, Mr. Linda King uh, uh, is, is, has been heavily invested in, in, uh, in, the, in the situation in Yemen and has been doing, I think, a great job a matter of uh, like giving attention to it. Uh, the thing is that um, we need to, to have more pay, paying attention in, in the in, in the problem of the unity yeah. when it comes to the peace process. How are we going to solve this problem? This is the big problem right now. Yeah. And, and, and if they're telling you that it's, it's just about the coup that the Houthi did, that is something that's already there and it's getting deep in there. The other problem that's the main problem is how now to unite Yemen, not yeah. to divide Yemen. Yemen is already divided right now, yeah. if you come to the, to the reality. So... If they are thinking about it like it's a side, it's a, it's a secondary problem, then for sure, whatever they'll bring to the table, it won't be uh, it won't be something of, um, it's not concrete, nothing will be implemented and, and nothing, it won't enhance stability in the region. So bringing the main problems on the table is the thing. And uh, this is something that uh, the US administration should consider and find uh, right mechanisms to solve this problem. Well, I'd like to make one caveat sure. to what I said, and that is con U.S. concern about the Bab el Mandeb and the passage, free passage for oil ships and all ships, commercial shipping. Yeah. And um, I think the one issue uh, where they could get involved with South Yemen is if South Yemen um, 
were to work to keep the Houthis from um, tacking shipping in the Bab el Mandeb. Right. Now that's 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 that's, that's, that's a very you know if if kind of situation, but. Uh, the one issue that a South Yemen poses, uh, one security issue that the South, a South Yemen would pose, is um, is the Bab el Mandeb Strait. Yep. And uh, I have no idea what the STC's position is on on you know on that issue. Uh, maybe Amr can enlighten us. Amr, for sure. For sure. I mean, <clears throat> this is something that's uh, it's a major concern, I think, for the for the entire entire world when it comes to maritime uh, passages. And uh, we know that one of the main objectives for Iran and and the Houthis is to get hold of the Bab Mandeb, yeah. to get hold of the Arabian Sea, uh, to have also to get hold of Socatra, and plus uh, to uh, the province of Al Mahra, which is the closest uh, point uh, to Bandar Abbas where Iran uh, can smuggle lots of weapons uh, uh, towards uh, Yemen and also smuggle uh, um, uh, drugs uh, to, to, to pass it to Saudi Arabia and, and Oman. Yeah. So, so these, these are very strategic. Plus, South Yemen has uh, more of 700, 800 kilometers of borders with, with Saudi Arabia. So these objectives are very crucial for Iran and Houthis to hold and 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 when when if if, if what we think of South Yemen state uh, establishment will provide or will con will uh, will take these uh, advantages from the Houthis and from the Iranians to the uh, and protect them from from getting hold of it. So this is one one, one thing of when it comes to security and ge geostrategic location of, of of South Yemen. Uh, the other things that we, we think it's, it's impossible now to have, uh, I remember after, during, because you've mentioned uh, David during 19, 19, the war in 1994, when, when in South declared independence after the war in, uh, in, uh, between the North and the South, the Clinton administration um, rhetoric at that time that unity is to enhance uh, democracy. Yeah. Uh, and 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 on the other side, uh, the independence of the South is not. So that's 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 the rhetoric at that time, and I, I think it, it's totally the opposite. And what we have right now is that our project is project for democracy, for liberty, for liberation, and in those areas to have a decentralized government. While on the other hand, in the North, they're more of a theological. Uh, system that they are uh, implementing in that in that in, in that space. So that's why I said it's very difficult right now to to unite to reunite Yemen now, because it's totally different systems, different vision to the future, plus the problem of the uh, security and geographical uh, location of, of 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 South Yemen for the region. And there's a question for you, uh, Amr. Although the STC is part of the Yemeni government, there are many disputes within the government, especially in regards to oil and other resources. Can you give us an update on what's happening regarding the dispute over Shabwa oil? Uh, there isn't any dispute within the PLC regarding those uh, regarding the, the oil. Uh, there is a there is a problem with the Houthis uh, because. Well, when we tried to um, to have an agreement, uh, a ceasefire agreement, and paying the salaries, uh, the health is required uh, that the salaries should come from the south, from yeah. the oil revenues and gas of, of Shabwa and Hadramaut, which we refused as 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 an STC, especially and all, and most of the southern members of the PLC, that we're not giving our revenues to the to the Houthis to use them uh, then uh, against the south and 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 um, in their war. So uh, that's our position within um, the peace process uh, that's led by the UN and also uh, intermediated by, by the Omanis and, and the Saudis uh, lately. So that's our position with the, um, regarding the, the, the Shabwa and, and Hadramaut oil and, uh, and, and gas revenues. 
Okay, so uh, we've got another question from the audience. I, I we kind of covered it, but we, we can answer it again. Is there a new understanding in Washington on looking at the fact that an independent state in Aden would respond positively to U.S. interests, such as combating terrorism, being a liberal democratic state in a strategic region, as compared to the tribal Houthi state? Um, let's go to Anthony for that. Um, can I can you repeat the question, please? Sure. Yeah, it, it's a little bit of a long one. Is there a new understanding in Washington on looking at the fact that an independent state in Aden would respond positively to U.S. interests, such as combating terrorism, being a liberal democratic state in a strategic region, versus the tribal Houthi state? Yeah, I I believe, like I stated earlier, that if there's a cohesive Southern state is established, it's a politically autonomous state, they have their own military units, there is a likelihood that there would be coordination between, um, between the military units within the South and members of the Joint Special Operations Command, Navy SEALs, there would be military coordination to, uh, to, to further combat AQAP. Okay, um, so we got another, yes, does this, someone want to chime in? No, okay, so we got another question from the audience uh, directed towards David. Uh, can we see the unity supporters, can we see the unity supporters like Houthis and Muslim Brotherhood unite against the STC? Is that possible or are the differences between the Muslim Brotherhood and the Houthis not going to permit them to unite? Well, you know, I've seen so many combinations of supposed enemies working together, yeah. not only in Yemen, but elsewhere, too. Um, uh, I mean, the Saudis have have supported Islam, uh, a brotherhood organization or affiliated with it historically. And um, so, and they're, they're hardly for in favor of the Brotherhood because at home they bl blame the Brotherhood for all their political problems. <laughs> so, but, um, so I, having seen the Saudis work with ISLA, um, uh, I, I think anything's possible. <laughs> it depends on the uh, immediate need of the players. You can have temporary alliances. You can have, you know, common interests that bring you together for, you know, days, weeks, months, and then you fall apart again. Um, but um, if you look at the how, uh, look at how 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 much Saudi Arabia attacked the Brotherhood for all their political problems, and yet they turned around and have collaborated cooperated with Islam in Yemen, then I think any kind of combination is possible. <laughs> Anthony, you agree with that? Um, yes, I agree with everything that uh, David said. Uh, an STC official that I spoke with and um, um, Mr. Um, Albide um, might be able to conf confirm this or elaborate on this said that there's a real possibility of, there's a fear within the STC of a real possibility of collusion between the Houthis, Isla, um, other Northern factions and possibly AQ um, and, and possibly AQAP. And there was a member of, 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 the, of the Yemeni parliament, Hazim, I forget his first name, who had, who had said that, who had stated that Isla and the Houthi should unite to stop Southern independence. But um, again, Mr. Al-Bide um, can provide more insight on that. Yeah. For sure, I mean, I mean uh, Ryan, when it, when it comes to, uh, to, to, the, to the Islah party, yes, we are with, uh, working together now within the PLC and the government. With the Islah Party, but at the same time, we understand that um, that they they are united in matter of, of when it comes to the to this to the to the future project, 
uh, to the future project, they are aligned with the Houthis that for them, unity is something that they 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 seek because the the Muslim Brotherhood mainly it's in in uh, Islah Party mainly it's in Odana. so they they unite and and um, at this at that at this stage when it comes to uh, the future of of, of Yemen. Uh, so we believe that uh, they will be aligned in in in, uh, in this matter uh, in the future, even if, if they are not right now. Uh, but what we are know exactly that Al Qaeda are are, are are um, uh, are aligned with the Houthis when it comes uh, to fight uh, STC uh, uh, groups in in South Yemen, uh, and we know like information that that some like we know that some of the emirs of the Al Qaeda uh, becoming uh, going to Sanaa most of the time, and, and yeah. we know them personally that they, they are in Sanaa and they're coming back to from Sanaa to to Hadramaut and to Al Mahara and to those areas. So this is something that we we know and we have information about that the the Al Qaeda and the Houthi are working together, and we know that there is also a link between uh, Muslim Brotherhoods and and, and Al Qaeda in, 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 in operating on those areas, especially when it was in in in, in Shabwa uh, last year. Uh, so these um, coalition uh, that's not vi like visible right now. It's, it's there and might come up uh, once uh, there is a, a serious move towards independence of South Yemen. Okay, and uh, Amr, a question for, for you from the audience. How is the relationship between the STC and key Arab countries like Egypt? Do the Egyptians receive the political ambitions of the Southerners positively? And how about the Saudis? See, at the... At the um, when 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 you talk about uh, Yemen unity, it's it's something that everyone is talking about. Yemen protect Yemen unity, and uh, even within the UN, uh, they're talking about it. This means that there is a big problem yeah. when they're when you're always stating about that there is uh, please protect the Yemen's unity, <laughs> and and uh, this is something that the Arab country, the official statement of the Arab countries, most of the Arab countries are are saying that. The thing is that we the, everyone agree now. Uh, there is a consensus within the international community that the problem is there. The thing is how to solve it yep. and how to bring it to the table. And this is uh, some of the approaches that we try to, to put on the table that our approach is to create a framework for this problem uh, within the peace process that's led by the UN. And this approach is a very logical, rational uh, uh, approach and we think that uh, the UN should uh, decode uh, this agenda within the framework of the peace process of Yemen. And uh, Egypt, when it comes to Egypt, uh, it's the same thing. It's, it goes to Egypt that they, they recognize that there is a problem and how to solve it. This is the main problem. Uh, and uh, hopefully that uh, if there is consensus within the, the, the international International and the inter internally, that we should put this issue on the table. Then I think whatever the outcome is, I think the one no one would mind uh, having uh, a stable uh, state yeah. in that region. In that region, also it goes to the Saudi Arabia. It's the same. They agree and they ap they approve that there should be a framework uh, to solve the problem of of the unity. Uh, Whatever the outcome, then it comes. It goes to the negotiation. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So there is like it's better than before. Before they didn't, they didn't even approve that there is a problem. Now everyone approves that there is a problem. Then now it comes to the stage where how to solve the problem. Um, and we have our 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 our, method, our approaches, and we think it's it's uh, uh, it's rational. Now it depends on the and the Houthis if they accept it or not. Okay, uh, for the next question, um, make sure I got this right. Okay, uh, and we kind of already addressed this, but it's probably for someone who just uh, logged in. Uh, can the Southern forces be a potential partner in fighting Al Qaeda and ISIS? Why should the US think that's in its interest to support South Yemen? Uh, David, why don't you take the first crack at that? Well, I you know, as you said, we kind of addressed that issue earlier. Um, 
I, I think the, uh, the relationship between talking about a relationship between the US government and, and the STC is premature. Other than security cooperation, which is already taking place, as Anthony's already said, um, you know, the SEALs and the special forces are in and out of South Yemen uh, on issues regarding um, fighting Al Qaeda and the STC and uh, I, those, are, those groups are, you know, our military groups that are going in there are cooperating. I don't, you know, I don't pretend to know the details, but I hear about the visits from special forces, U.S. special forces in South Yemen. Uh, yeah. And um, uh, so there's that going on. Uh, but what are, you know, as I said, our official, the U.S., not my position, the U.S. official position is they want a unified Yemen. And I don't think they're gonna spend a lot of time thinking about or acting to, to uh, help that happen. And that if, and I think if it's the South does split away and become independent, I think the US will just accept it. After all, we're not friends of the Houthis. Yeah. Neither, are, neither is the STC. No. So, <laughs> So there are points of common interest. Anthony? I don't really have anything, Tad. I agree with, okay. um, with, with, with David's statements. He successfully laid it out. Okay, and Amr? I, I, I would just add that for sure, uh, the, 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 the Southern forces are, 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 are uh, like keen uh, to, to fight Al-Qaeda. It's not because of America, it's because of our local uh, and, and, and uh, internal uh, vision that we, we don't want those groups to, uh, to come to, to haunt us in, in that area. And we know that they are against uh, future, I guess, against lightning, of, of the, against the, 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 the civil state that we are, we are going ahead to. So we are combating Al-Qaeda in Aden, we did, in Abiyan, we did especially uh, the last six months in, in Eastern Arabs. We are doing also in, 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 in Lahaj and all the provinces, Hadramaut, Shabwa, and most of the provinces. Uh, for sure, this needs to, uh, we need more to sharpen our knives uh, to, to, be more, uh, uh, to, to be more effective. And um, we are doing this all the way and we're not stopping. Fighting Al-Qaeda and for sure defending our, our land uh, in the south uh, from the Houthis. This is something that we are doing it either way. Okay, and Amr, there's a question from the audience for you. Is the decision of the Aden governor to withhold revenues to the central bank a strategy agreed by STC leadership? How far can it go since there are signs of retreat? This move was uh, was uh, decided by the the governor of Aden when when because there is a crisis within the government and there is a problem uh, there is economic problem uh, in in uh, in our areas so this the governor decided to save uh, the city and try to not supply the central bank with the with the with the income uh, with the revenues uh, just to uh, it's a short term. Uh, move uh, till we solve the problem within the government and within the PLC. So it's not something that it's heading towards something. No, it's just uh, it's just a move that uh, it's a contingency move uh, that the governor did. And for sure, when there is a uh, when we solve the problem, then everything will will go back as it is. And another question for Amr from the audience, will STC get the support of Russia and China, especially when the US is reluctant to help the STC? Yeah. The, um, see, we are under the umbrella of the coalition right now, and we are working close by the, U the US, the, U the UAE and uh, the Saudis. Um, so under this umbrella, we are working uh, whatever help we can get through this umbrella, we're 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 working uh, uh, to 
as I told you, two objectives in matter when it comes to military and security, Houthis defend our land and, uh, and, and, uh, and counterterrorism, and also at the same time providing services and, and uh, service to our people. Uh, so these are the main three objectives that we do, and we do it through the umbrella of the coalition. Uh, okay, and David, uh, so the question we got for you is, how can the US help Yemen economically? How come, despite all the billions sent to Yemen from big donors, we don't see the humanitarian issue developing? I think the U.S. is providing humanitarian aid. I think the key issue has been the bank. You know, there are two banks now in the country. Yeah. And um, it's really confusing, and either, even to me, exactly who's getting paid and how. And I understand... Somebody said that in the North, uh, the Houthis are still using the old currency. Um, but the Saudis have been pouring billions, billion, billions of dollars into the central, what they regard as the central bank in Aden. Um, so uh, it's very, to me, it's very confusing about how anybody gets paid and where the money is coming from. <laughs> Amr probably can tell us a lot more about that. <laughs> but the US is, um, is, has been trying to, we had restrictions, the Federal Reserve had restrictions on releasing some of the Yemeni money that was frozen because of the conflict. I sort of lost track whether, um, uh, Tim Lender King was able to unscramble that so that some of those frozen funds came into the, the central bank in Aden. Anthony? I, I agree with what David said. I don't have anything to add to that. Okay. And Amr? The, when, when it comes to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the revenues and how the, 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 the state is, is functioning, this is for sure. It's it's something that uh, it's good to pay attention to, and and uh, because of the dual situation in, in the state, like we have a central bank in Sana'a, that's not legal but it's there, uh, and we have one in Aden that's legal but there is no money in it, and uh, the problem is that we, there is no oil revenues. The Houthi stopped that. We get uh, we, we we normally we 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 depend on that on taxes. Uh, also, and we get we paid our civil uh, civil servants uh, through that. Uh, when it comes to the Houthi areas, they have lots of taxes, uh, and they are 20, more than twenty million uh, people uh, in that area, yeah. more than the south, like triple, even quadruple the south. So they have lots of income when it comes to the uh, to the taxes. Also, they have the khums. The Khums is, is something that's a religious uh, uh, Hashimi uh, Zaidi thing that they, they collect from the people. Yeah. So they collect lots of uh, income and, and they use it in the war and also to pay some of the civil uh, servants. And, 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 and that's, uh, that's the case in, in, in Sana'a and, and, and around these areas. So yeah, it is, um, the economic situation is, it is deteriorating. And now we are going to a very, very dark sit, uh, situation because the oil is not pumping and no income uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the central bank. So um, we are, for the next six months, it will be very, very um, um, like bad situation coming. Okay. Uh, so the next question from the audience, uh, and I'll send this one over to Anthony. Uh, how would you evaluate the performance of U.S. Special Representative Ambassador Tim Lenderking? Is he effective? Do you think he would be replaced in the remaining two years of Biden's presidency? Um, I think as Amr touched, uh, Mr. Albede touched on this earlier, um, uh, the Special UN Representative, the Special UN Envoy is doing a good job. He's doing the best he can um, in terms of trying to advance peace in Yemen. Whether or not he is replaced um, is something, will we replace in the next two years is something we can only speculate. I think that he's, he's 
he's doing the best he can under the, the circumstances and the situation that are that have been manifesting on the ground. David? Well, there are a lot of peacemakers involved in this whole issue. Um, I mean, the direct talks between the Houthis and the Saudi government, including the Saudis sending a delegation to Sana'a, um, is a lot more important than what Tim Lender can, can possibly achieve. And the UN representative has sort of, from, from what I can see, has been <clears throat> more important than whatever the US input. The US role seems to be to sort of encourage, and one of encouragement and sort of on the sidelines rather than the center of the problem. Oman is playing an important role. Right. Um, they're holding talks now in Amman, Jordan about uh, exchange of prisoners. Um, so there are a lot of peacemakers, mediators and, m involved in what's going on right now. And um, I, I think it's, Tim is sort of a, a US flag carrier for let's find a peaceful resolution to this conflict, encouraging all sides to, uh, to negotiate rather than fight it out on the battlefield. Uh, I think that's been his principal role. Yeah. And Amr, what do you think of the U.S. Special Representative? Uh, as I mentioned before, at the beginning of, the, of, uh, of my participation in this uh, webinar, that uh, he's been doing, uh, like he's, as I said, he's advancing uh, the, uh, the direction towards dialogue and talk and to solve the problem peacefully. And uh, the thing is that his leverage is just limited. Yeah. Uh, on one side, not, not the other side. So uh, that really uh, didn't help him. But at the same time, what we think that it should, uh, um, because of his leverage on this side, then he can also advance on the on how to solve the, the all pro the problems. And as I mentioned, the problem of unity is something that he should consider and put it on the table, uh, not not just to to not just to, to encourage uh, the talks for the, for, for the problem of the Houthi and the coup in Sana'a. Yeah. So this is th uh, the, the thing that uh, we, we ask from uh, Mr. Linda King to pay attention to. Otherwise, he did his maximum and that's his leverage. Okay, uh, okay next question uh, that we just got in is, is there a need for the UN Security Council to issue a new resolution on Yemen against 2216 of the year 2015? Um, who, who wants to tackle that one? Well, that original resolution is totally irrelevant to the facts on the ground. I mean, it called for, if, if, I'm, if you're referring to the one that was passed, what was it in, yeah, 2015, mm -hmm. no, demanding that the Houthis return the arms to the central government and, you know, and sort of give up <laughs> and uh, stop fighting. I mean, it's totally irrelevant. So um, it might well be um, not a bad idea to have a new resolution because that resolution has zero chance of ever being fulfilled. Yeah. So um, yes, I think it is time for a more relevant uh, resolution. Okay. And this might be the last question uh, that we have from the audience. So if anyone has questions uh, that are paying attention to the webinar, make sure you submit them uh, right now um, because this is the, the last question that we got on the list and it's for Amr. Um, what is the STC's plan to ensure the in independence of South Yemen without triggering a new war with the Houthis or the Muslim Brotherhood? Well, see, uh, this is, I think this is a big question that how to do that. How to do that is to create uh, a balance of, 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 of power uh, between, between the two sides where, where everyone knows that they can, because now 
we we are on the borders of of the the normal uh, the the what's known to be South Yemen, what we call it South Arabia and 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 and, and this name. Uh, that's our territory, and we are at that border. The thing is that if we ask for that and we try to solve this problem via dialogue and via peace, via the, the right channels uh, through the peace process, if they said no, then they have to attack us. Yeah. To, to then we have to defend. Exactly. That's 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 a, that's the, the the normal thing that it would happen. So <laughs> either they accept or take or or have a war with us. So in our position, we need we don't want to force it. We want to talk about how to solve it. If they don't want, then we have to defend ourselves at this uh, at this time. And to prevent having this war, uh, as I told you in the beginning, we need to to show them that if they did this war, it will be very uh, painful. Yeah. Okay, David. Yes, I just want to ask Amr what he thinks of the Saudis setting up new militia, tribal militia in, in the South, which can only be to, you know, um, uh, put pressure on the STC. And uh, is this going to be a problem for the STC? Honestly, not. Uh, the way of forming those kinds of of of, uh, of uh, those kinds of formation are not really uh, serious. We've, we've seen that for the last eight years they've been forming the national. They call it the national guard or yeah. the national uh, uh, the national army. Uh, it's been like it now it's reached four hundred thousand. Where are they? Nothing. <laughs> uh, so it's. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that the, 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 the tools that they are depending on is, is just useless. And uh, it's not effective on the ground. And whatever they're doing, it's, it's uh, to be honest, it's failing. And even they can't resist the Houthis if the Houthis attacked. If this is meant to, to defend the, the, the land from the Houthis. It's not going to hold at all. For three days, they won't hold. Okay. Did anyone have any final closing thoughts that they wanted to share? Something that they wanted to mention that didn't get brought up? Yeah, I, I'd like to mention, I'm concerned that there may be another civil war in South Yemen, specifically over Hadramut, which the Saudis care a lot about, as I said earlier. And um, I'm wondering whether Amr is concerned about Hadramut and where it's going and what the Saudis are doing there. Um, the the Hadramut situation is a matter of concern for sure. It's something that's it's a, it's a divided influence uh, between the two sides. And uh, we as an SCC, we think that the, the wadi of Hadramut should be liberated from the remnants of the occupation of 94 and it has to go out. The others think that it should remain to uh, preserve the influence of, of the other side. And this is something that we, uh, we know that we should, we should solve uh, in, a, in a dialogue uh, between, between us and our, our, our partners uh, in the coalition. Uh, for sure, the, there is some reactions uh, that we're going to see uh, maybe in the, in the coming one week, two weeks. Uh, but we will try to open dialogue with all the components that's up there, and, and uh, we will we'll try to to find consensus as uh, uh, as much as we can. I mean, as uh, as soon as as we can. All right. Well, this is a great webinar. Thank you, David. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Amr, uh, for you. participating in the webinar. And thank you to the audience who uh, participated as well, sending in their questions and everyone who's viewed uh, the webinar. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Remember, we're the Arabian Peninsula Institute. And that way you'll be notified of future webinars and events that the organization is holding. Again, thanks for watching. And I'm Ryan Morrow from the Arabian Peninsula Institute. I look forward to seeing everyone again uh, at the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much, everyone. Bye, Bye now.
Bye, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.